subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. So guys, in today's session, uh, we'll be discussing uh, the exposure triangle. Uh, as you probably know that camera uh, is just a box and uh, photography is all about uh, light and how we control the amount of light hitting the camera or the sensor inside the camera. That is what's called photography. Uh, the exposure triangle, um, it involves three elements, which is uh, shutter speed and then this aperture and then there's ISO and uh, we'll be going over them one by one. So we'll start with the shutter speed. So let's say you're sitting inside a room and there's a blind in front of a window and you want to control the amount of light. Uh, if you open and then slowly close the blind, it'll let in more light. But if you quickly open and then close the blind, it'll let in less light. So Inside the camera body, there is a shutter mechanism uh, that sits between your lens and your sensor. And that shutter mechanism, uh, we can control the speed with which that shutter opens and closes. And that is shutter speed. And you want to use high shutter speed if you want to capture motion, you want to make sure your pictures are sharp, but if you want to capture the trail of light, like moving cars, or you want to use uh, special effects for uh, photographing uh, waterfalls and you want to give that cascading look, you want to use slow shutter speed. So using shutter speed, you can control the amount of light and that's one uh, item for the exposure triangle. Now we'll talk about the second item, which is equally important, and that is the aperture. Uh, aperture is the diameter of the lens that is attached to the camera. So when you look at a lens, you see glass at the front and at the back of a lens. But inside, uh, sandwiched between these two glass pieces is an um, iris leaf ring, as we call them. Uh, in the older days, uh, you could manually change that and you could see the the diameter you know increasing or decreasing uh, size as you change the f-stop the newer uh, more uh, technologically advanced lenses they have electronic uh, control so you can only control them by using the controls on your camera the benefit of using um, large diameter or uh, smaller f-stop uh, lenses is that it lets you focus or defocus depending upon your requirement so uh, a smaller f-stop, let's say f1.2, it blurs the background more uh, and that is the lens I mostly use for my portraits because I can focus on the, the subject, the person in front of me while blurring out the background. It, give, it gives a very defocused and you know smooth, creamy look to my pictures. It also allows for more light to enter the camera body and light is precious you know, when it comes to photography. So the advantage of uh, big diameter lenses, putting it in layman's term, is that they let in more light and they let you blur the background more. But that's not always the case. Uh, Sometimes you want to use a smaller aperture. Let's say you want to do photography for landscape. And in landscape, it's important to make sure that everything is in focus from front all the way to the infinity. And that is where you use, you know, bigger f-stop numbers, let's say f22, f30, etc. So a lens that has an allowance to use a bigger diameter, uh, I always prefer that because I can open the lens and let in more ambient light and blur the background. And I can also close down the aperture and still, you know, use it for uh, landscape photography. That's why those lenses are more expensive. Uh, in layman's term, we call them fast lenses. Um, and now we're going to be moving on to the third element, which is the ISO. So housed inside your camera body is a sensor. Uh, and in the older days, we used to have film and there were different speed of uh, films. There was 50, 100, 400, etc, etc. 
and depending upon what type of photography you were doing you would choose the film speed so i was shooting in low light i would shoot a higher iso let's say 800 but if i was shooting in broad daylight in sunny conditions i would use a low um, a smaller uh, iso number let's say if uh, iso 200 or iso 100 or iso 50. the disadvantage of using a uh, higher speed film was the grain so as you increase the sensitivity of the film towards light the noise or the grains they become more prominent uh, with the newer technologies uh, what they've done is that they've added this feature of changing the iso of the sensor so there is only one sensor housed inside your camera body but you can control the sensitivity so the newer sensors they are much cleaner and you can gr get great looking pictures even in low light at high isos as compared to the older days films so the cameras that we use uh, the mirrorless uh, canon cameras they have iso sensitivity from 50 100 all the way to 25600 and uh, as we move to the higher isos the noise uh, gets more prominent but not so much you know as it used to be the newer cameras uh, that canon is churning out they have very clean images at high isos so we've discussed um, all the three elements that make up the exposure triangle, uh, the shutter speed, we've discussed the aperture, and we've discussed the eye. So I'm going to go over them quickly again. The shutter speed is how quickly the shutter opens and closes, and it determines how much light enters. And then the aperture is the opening of the lens. You can make it smaller or bigger, and that determines how much light enters the camera. And then there is the ISO. Uh, which is the sensitivity of the sensor towards light and you can control these three things uh, together or one by one for different creative results and uh, we'll be going over different techniques to you know use these uh, controls best uh, for uh, great looking pictures subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button